Welcome to the Mosquito Steve Radio Show on Talk Radio 1190. It's more than just mosquito talk. Mosquito Steve will talk about natural products, organics, good business practices, and more. And now, here's your host, Mosquito Steve. Howdy, howdy, everybody. Welcome to the Mosquito Steve Show. Can y'all hear me? I can't hear anything. Can you hear me? Can they hear me well? Yes, they can. Can they hear me now? <laughs> Sorry. They have to be old to understand that. Hey, that guy went and worked for, is working for Sprint now. I know. Isn't that weird? Hey, so, he, tra- he switched. Hey, maybe I'll go work for Off someday. Ooh, I'm just kidding. Ha. I would never do that. Never do that. Now I, now I got to be careful. I'm going to get sued if I'm not careful here. So, okay, well, welcome to our show. I have a couple of guests here today, and um, they're on the headset. So I invite y'all to, if you hear me say anything that you want to comment on, you just go ahead and comment on, and then we'll get to y'all here in about uh, in the second segment. Uh, but I want to introduce y'all to Anika Cooper. Hello. How are you? So, yeah, and be sure and talk right into the microphone. And David England. Hello. Glad to be here, Steve. All right. So this is uh, recovery month and we're nearing the end of recovery month. So I wanted to be sure and um, talk a little bit about that today. But we're going to talk about mosquitoes first. So let's go to the mosquito news. Okay. so West Nile. Now, you guys know, I know Zika is getting all the news, but here in Texas, it's West Nile we got to worry about. And so uh, we have had a couple more confirmed cases. In Dallas, we have 41 total cases of West Nile virus. So West Nile virus, this Mm. means that you actually, this came from a mosquito. You did not have sex with somebody that had West Nile virus. You did not travel to a country that had (laughs) West Nile virus. You actually got bit by a mosquito here that has West Nile virus. Denton County has 11 cases, and um, Tarrant County has 24. So here in North Texas, you know, we're looking at about 75 cases of uh, West Nile virus. Wow. Wow. So the reason West Nile virus is more important to us, not only is it uh, transmitted by mosquitoes, but it's also very deadly. So uh, we have had a couple of deaths. We've had two deaths here uh, just in Dallas from West Nile virus. So, uh, So you guys... Here's the what I'm getting at is protect yourself. Don't worry about Zika. I can tell you exactly how to not get Zika. Don't go to areas that have Zika. Bada boom, bada bing. Stay out of Miami. Look, if you're pregnant, why would you go to Miami or Puerto Rico or someplace like that right now? Yeah. I mean, surely, surely there's a way you could delay that trip for a few months or I guess what that'd be nine months. Nine right? months. Yeah, okay, so I'm I've got to do the math because it's I've never <laughs> had to do that unfortunately. So um, anyway, so uh, with the Zika, of course Zika's getting all the news. It's everybody's freaking out over Zika, and the truth is, is that you know there's just not that many. Um, you got about 40 cases of that in Florida, and Florida has about 25 percent of all the Zika cases in the country are in Florida, and wow. so. Uh, Here's the thing. We have Zika cases here, but you know how they got it. They didn't get it from mosquitoes. We have no, in Texas, there is nobody that has gotten Zika virus from a mosquito unless they were overseas. If you go to Puerto Rico and got bit by a mosquito, but most of the cases here were transmitted by sex. So um, unprotected sex if you are pregnant or wanting to get pregnant and you've been in those areas would be um that would just be irresponsible is what it'd be so uh let me read you this this is from the department of uh health science um health sciences is it what is it dds we call it dish and so i don't know what you call it dshs what do you call it what is uh, it department of the De- department of science of so, so, it's dish it's the yeah it's <laughs> health dish. services Department something International. something health services department of something health, health services. services in texas anyways it's <laughs> primarily spread to people through mosquito bites the virus can spread from mother to child it can spread through the the blood transfusion or sexual contact so um wow. most people 80 percent of the people don't show symptoms of uh, zika virus so uh, you can pass it on if you've got Zika virus and you're wandering around and a mosquito bites you, it can go bite somebody else and pass it on. So, mm-hmm. um, so you know, what all this means is wear repellent. If you're going to be outside, wear repellent. Now, we have lots and lots of cases where people don't go outside very much. They only go to their mailbox, and yet 
they got, you know, our, the very first death in North Texas came from a guy in Highland Park. Walked to his mailbox, got bit by a mosquito, and died. From West Nile? Yes. Wow. So uh, West Nile got over here in 1999. Here's the thing. Zika's here to stay, guys. Uh, West Nile virus is here to stay. So um, I expect that at some point we're going to have chikungunya. We're going to have some other things that we got to worry about. So if you're not thinking about protecting yourself from mosquitoes right now, you need to start thinking about it. It's just it's just a good idea to be wise. There are things you can do in the yard which will take care of most of the mosquitoes. But if West Nile virus has been found in your neighborhood, it doesn't make sense to just try and protect your yard. You still have to wear repellent. So Mm -hmm. I hate to tell you all that, but you do. If you don't like the repellent you're wearing, you don't like the way it smells, the way it feels, and it's not working very well, well, then I suggest you go to MosquitoSteve.com and order some Mosquito Steve spray-on repellent because it is the most effective mosquito repellent in the world. So um, we've got – plus we're we're always doing um, research and development. I've been out spraying and testing over the last couple of weeks – and uh, yes, it's it's a lot of fun. It's, it really is. Uh, so I go out there and I have these mist blowers and I walk around and I spray these yards down with them. And then I have to go back the next day. Before I spray, though, I count and see how many mosquitoes land on me. And so um, I've, it depends. Sometimes I'm there for three minutes, but sometimes I'll be out there 20 minutes just counting how many it's land same. on me. And then I spray and then I come back the next day and then I come back the next day and I have to keep counting. And that's how we tell how well the product's working. And so we've been trying to develop a product uh, specifically for one client that is actually, that's a lethal. So my products are all repellents, Mm -hmm. uh, but we wanted a lethal product. We want a product you can spray that's actually going to kill the mosquitoes. The problem is, is that lethal products that kill mosquitoes also kill ladybugs, butterflies, and bees. So, um, so for a yard spray, I'm not as concerned because you're putting it down in the yard, so you're not affecting the bees. Most bees are not sitting on the grass, um, and so we don't affect the bees as much when we're just doing the yard spray. Um, and so we've been working on a product. This guy it normally would spray um, some pretty toxic stuff. And so yeah. the way I figure it is it's better for the environment. If I can get him to move over to that, then it's better for the environment and, and it'll protect better too. So, um, you know, you guys, let me tell you. So we, we do have evidence that pesticides are causing um, uh, more autism. Um, they're affecting uh, the brain development of children. So um, so it really is important. we got to start doing these conversations. It's just like in recovery. Mm-hmm. Right. Look, there's thousands and thousands of kids every day start addiction, and yet that never leads the news, does it? Ever. And it seems like, you know, we're talking about all these, what we're talking about, you know, uh, in Chicago it's a big deal because 3,000 people have been murdered over in those neighborhoods, and that's great. You know, let me tell you something. It's We're getting more kids than that. You know, starting addiction every day, we're getting how many, what is it, uh, 129 overdoses every day, something yeah, like that? Yeah, especially in Cincinnati right now. Oh, Cincinnati, my gosh. Cincinnati, the heroin with the elephant tranquilizers that got put in the heroin. Wow. People are dying. They had like 300 deaths in two weeks. Yeah, the See, fentanyl is really coming on strong. When you say something like that about elephant tranquilizer, I'm sitting here thinking, well, what a disgusting thing. But I have to tell you, back when I was using and mm-hmm. drinking you know what? It wouldn't have bothered me. So no. Man, oh, really? Does yeah. it work? The stronger, Does it work? the better. It's like, it's like there's a guy named Earl H. that speaks. Yeah, it's awesome. Just... And he says, uh, you know, his drug of choice is, what do you got? <laughs> and that <laughs> that's it. mine, too. Yeah. You know, whatever I got. Yeah. And that's today. That's exactly what happens with kids. Kids, you know, whatever they can get access to, that's what they're going to use. So a uh, little bit more about Zika, and then we're going to go on, because there's a big deal that just happened this week. We've been talking about funding to fight Zika. Just blows my mind. We got all this funding to fight Zika. What about fighting West Island stuff? So hopefully Mm. some of this is going to go towards other diseases. But um, they did finally approve a $1.4 billion um, uh, contract to combat the Zika virus. $394 million of that uh, is for the Center for Disease Control, of which they'll spend about $3.94 million probably of it to actually do something. Uh, but anyways, that's uh, for vector um, and prevention. And then uh, also to, for technical assistance for states, international response activities. 
international response. So we got a problem here, but we're going to spend our money everywhere else. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try not to get political no, I, on this. I get it's that. really hard not to. Of this amount, $44 million is to reimburse states for public health emergency preparedness. So $44 million is not going to go towards helping us because it's going to what we've already done. So, um, so the $394 million, if, if that actually went to um, for vector control, so currently right now we spend about $300 million in vector control. So municipalities have a vector control agency usually, especially if they're of any size. In this country, we spend about $300 million. Florida alone spends about $60 million of that. Wow. So, uh, But that's how much these municipalities spend to protect you from mosquitoes. And, uh, and, and I need to reiterate that the CDC, actually, the director of the CDC says the pesticides they're using um, are not working very well and the mosquitoes have become resistant to it. So, um, so anyway, so there is some money being spent. Fortunately, some of the money is going towards vaccines, and I'm all for the vaccines. So we are already out of time on mosquitoes. We are done with mosquito wow. talk. So uh, we might That's venture into it a little bit here in a little bit. I'm telling you, the time goes really, really fast. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, coming back here with Anika Cooper and David England, we're going to go all over the map. You guys, you got to hear their story. It's a lot of fun stuff. So come right back after this word from our sponsors, and uh, thanks for listening. Welcome back to the Mosquito Steve Radio Show. Welcome back. This is Benny, and I'm here with the Jets. Um, <laughs> hey, this is Mosquito Steve. I'm here with David England and Anika Cooper. And so it's probably going to slip out at some point. I'm going to okay. call you Annika. Yeah, I'm okay Wasn't with Wasn't that it. the name of, is it, was it Annika? Is that the name of Darth Vader's son or yes, something? Annika. Yes, Annika. Yes. Anakin? Wow. Anakin, yes. Anakin, Anakin. okay. Well, yes. that's the male version. Well, Anakin See, if, was Darth Vader, was a, but. What? Anakin what? was Darth Vader. What was about, about a comment about a butt? <laughs> what was that? I may have pushed a button and y'all misheard no. something. I don't know. I don't know. I could have sworn he said you're talking out of your butt. I think I'm pretty sure that's what he said. Something like that. So, anyways, thanks, Will. You're fired. Oh, dang. dang. Uh, okay. So, anyways, the reason that I have David here, I've known David for a long time. Um, and I've watched you, you know, struggle. I've seen you, yes. you know, when you're doing great, and I've seen you struggle through this. I myself struggled when I got into recovery I, for four years. I was in and out, in and out, could not get sober. Uh, but then I finally got a hold of me in 1995. Um, so, um, so I want to hear a little bit about. Yeah, in fact, this is my recovery. I just hit 21. Me too. Did you really? August your, 7th of 95. Oh, really? Oh, you're a month older than I am. <laughs> so mine's September 11th of 95. Wow. <laughs> So, uh, so David, I want to hear um, okay. about your experience. So, uh, what finally worked? Oh man, I tell you what, getting beat down. Um, you know, I started uh, recreationally just drinking, smoking pot, because um, it kind of ran in my family. Um, <clears throat> and at age nineteen, uh, methamphetamine got the best mm. of me. Wow! <laughs> so I was uh, straight out of the gate uh, addicted. Um, thought I wanted to be in the big city and, uh, addiction got a hold of me for 20 years. Um, methamphetamine, cocaine, uh, of course, alcohol, everything, like you just said, um, Earl Haltier says, you know, he like, I mean, everything was, 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 was my nature and, uh, you know, did a lot of ecstasy. Um, but to answer your question, I finally, um, you know, I was in and out. I could not understand, um, why I could not make the decision to be done. You know, I'd get sober when the heat was on, um, would hit a bottom, go into treatment, which was 11 treatment centers, um, in and out of AA. Didn't you go through 11 treatment centers too? No, one. You just went through one? <laughs> wow, I could have sworn. I've got it backwards. Okay. And I call them rest centers for me at right? the time because yeah. I couldn't get to surrender. Um, I kept finding the, uh, like, a, you know, easier, softer way, trying to beat it, and I never could. Um, you must have been a wealthy man to afford 11 treatment no, centers. No, well, <laughs> I won't go into my whole history of how what um, financed my drug addiction, too, but you can kind of figure that out. Yeah. But, um, but you know, the, the typical story, in and out of jobs, I mean, uh, one disaster after the next, uh, mentally, emotionally, physically, 
spiritually bankrupt, um, and I couldn't get it because I would walk into AA, and I was in AA for, you know, in and out for 15 years. Wow. And I would get, I would jump in socially, but I just could not concede to my innermost self. And the fear would hit, uh, untreated alcoholism, uh, drug addiction, and I would have to feed, I would have to feed the addiction. And I mean, Steve knows. I mean, I had plenty of people trying to help me that had the solution, that uh, you know, that had the gift. And uh, but to answer your question, um, October twenty third, two thousand thirteen, was my day, and okay. my clarity hit, and I've been sober ever since. Wow. So. Okay. So, um, so I don't want to get. I want to be careful to protect anonymity here, um, but I do. There's a big movement now. I want to ask both y'all about this. Mm-hmm. So the movement now and the trend is towards um, us coming out of the closet, basically, with our recovery. You mm-hmm. know, I'm in, breaking the stigma. instead of saying I am an alcoholic or I'm a drug addict, we say, uh, you know, I'm long-term in long-term recovery. recovery. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, in fact, you can't even say substance abuse <laughs> anymore. Now that's that's a no-no and uh, all it's all changing. Mm. So what do you think about the... Um, about this mm. new trend and the way this is moving. And Anika wants to see I started doing. <laughs> Anika wants to go for Annika Anakin Sky Anakin. Lark, whatever it is. So, thank you. Um this is kind of a it's a crazy thing for me because when I got clean and I say clean because I came up in Narcotics Anonymous um wow. since August 7th of 1995. And before I got into um the industry that's all I knew. I mean, I knew that there was AA and I knew that it had a different, you know, you said sober. Um, but I didn't realize how separated it was out in the industry and how Narcotics Anonymous in Texas has a really bad connotation. Yes. Um, yeah, you're right. And, you know, I've always said clean. And I started getting confused because I'm around people constantly that are saying sober. And so I just don't get it doesn't bother me either way. I don't care where you're at. I know it's definitely traditions are very, um, I mean, you have to follow whatever program that you're in. That's the traditions. Um, I do say long-term recovery a lot Mm -hmm. whenever, if I'm doing a bio or something for social media or for the news, um, I say recovery instead of clean or sober, just because uh, it just kind of takes away the, anybody looking at one specific um, 12 step program. Cause I believe 12 steps are going to get you, if you're working the 12 steps, they can get you to the same place. Absolutely. Which is the spiritual, having a spiritual awakening. Um, However you want to say it is up to you. Obviously, if you're in a Narcotics Anonymous meeting, you need to say clean. If you're in an AA meeting, you need to say sober. Um, But if it gets you to the same place, man, do it. Get in some 12-step program. Yeah, I've met some people from the southeast that have told me about Narcotics Anonymous and how big it is it's and huge. how it thrives and it's actually yes. yeah. in some places stronger than Alcoholics Anonymous, which is LA. Just, it's it's very interesting to me how they do that, but um but I don't know why it's really never caught on here. I will tell you, I cuz I visited some meetings back mm-hmm. in the early days and there were people drinking in the parking lot and I thought that was just a little bit too weird because I I had already by that time I'd already stopped drinking and I knew I needed to now it's the drug addiction I needed to uh, deal with and so mm-hmm. um, so for me they were me, drinking in the Narcotics Anonymous they were drinking in the parking lot of the um, the group not too far from here actually oh yeah well and, uh, I mean I will tell you that in Narcotics Anonymous alcohol I mean it says it in the preambles alcohol is a drug so it is a drug we don't do any. There's not, I mean, it's abstinence. Well, and, and things may have changed. That was, that mm-hmm. was actually in 1992. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, it's been a while. So things yeah. have changed uh, uh, quite a bit. So I, you know, for me, I, I do believe, cause I believe in, in uh, respecting the anonymity because yes. um, it's kind of like, and I'll use this, everybody knows about Charlie Sheen and mm-hmm. how Charlie Sheen, you know, yes. uh, went on talking about how he went through Alcoholics Anonymous. By gosh, it's working. And yes. he was going to go out and save the world. And the next thing you know, yes. he's, you know, he's winning and yeah. he's, uh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, hanging out with prostitutes and, and going through all that. And, and, and he's very, very public about all that. Exactly. And that's really what why I like to protect that anonymity because yes. I don't want hmm. um, I don't want to damage. Yes. Uh, those programs. Uh, but what I've also found, see, I used to only believe in 12 step programs like mm-hmm. that. I mean, well, I do the 12 steps, but I mean, only believe in the anonymous programs. 
And then um, I uh, had a friend that could never get clean, and he tried for years and years. And he actually helped me to help 12-step me back in the early days. And so, but he could never get mm. clean. His veins were collapsed. Mm. I was sure he was dead. When I go out, would go out and speak at places, I'd talk about, you know, my old friend, Freddie. Well, I'm not going to say his last name, but my yeah. old friend, Freddie. And Freddie's got to be dead because he was practically dead when, he, when I knew him and he 12-stepped me. And uh, one day I was at a church. Celebrate and I heard recovery. this voice, and I turned around and celebrate recovery. Mm-hmm. And he had awesome. he had eleven months at the time. He's sober six years now. Yeah. And uh, I just I can't I can't believe it. I never thought Mm-mm. because I will say the AA program has saved it's oh it's, it's saved millions everything. and millions and millions. Yeah. yeah. And so you know it's got the numbers behind it. Uh, but I do know now there's other ways. There's to, other to many ways to skin a cat. That's I mean, right. that's yeah. what I'm finding. And I. Ooh, we don't talk about skin and cats. <laughs> I'm sorry, Anika, we, we don't, that's, that's going a little too far. Well, let me <laughs> say this. The, 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 you know, the foundation is of the 12 steps for all the other 12 step mm-hmm. yes. uh, groups, whether it's CA, uh, NA, uh, Celebrate Recovery. So it's a pretty cool deal. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the 12 steps. And when are you going to work 12 steps, Anika? I, I'm just, yeah, I it's one I'm, it's one step at a time. I've yeah, heard one step, one a, step year. a month or a, a year. year yeah. I've heard. Oh, yeah. I'm like, so, wow. Uh, you know, the steps are actually nothing to be afraid of. I tell you, it is. I was afraid of them. You mm-hmm. know, I didn't want to work mm-hmm. them. I especially didn't want to get honest with somebody. Uh, but what happens is they change you, and if you keep working them over time, they really it's it will make you more and more spiritual and change you and continue to change you. And, those principles. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm one of those guys that um, I've worked them several times, and I don't think yeah, I don't know anybody that's worked them too many times, but I know some people that need to work them. So keep working. Um, okay, so David, yeah. I'm going to go back okay. to David. We're going to yeah. focus on David because I know David likes to focus on David. So we're going <laughs> to focus on David here. That's so. all I think about. <laughs> First of all, what is you sober do? one two three? Okay, sober one two three. Um, dot net, uh, well, actually, my sober one, two, three LLC is when I got sober. Um, uh, and of course, I was, I'm an advocate of the 12 steps. I worked the 12 steps, got the gift of desperation, and um, I've been sober ever since. You know, I just finally got that willingness. Um, in the meanwhile, is uh, it's associated with my last treatment center, which is Solutions, mm-hmm. um, IOP. Hi, and Lois. And Hi, uh, Lois. Hey, Lois. And uh, what a gift. Yeah. Um, but as I was going, um, it was um, uh, asked of me to say, well, you know, you, you would do great and be a great service to get in the industry. And I said to Deborah, who works, works the front mm-hmm. office, and I said, Hi, Deborah. I said, Deborah, Hi, Deborah. How, do we, how do I approach this, you know, uh, with my background and, you know, 25 years of addiction and no education? And she said, well, why don't you become a recovery coach? So we researched it and went online. I found Starting Point MN, which is out of the Hazleton Arena in Minnesota, and got on there and researched it and became a recovery coach. Um, So that's what I do. I do sober companion work, sober coaching by the hour, sober transport, and intervention so, you know, it's it's interesting because I don't think anybody knew what sober escorts, sober companions or anything that was until the Josh um, thing, the That's right. Texas Ranger went nuts, and now all of a sudden it's on the front burner. So I want to talk more about that because I want to hear more about uh, the, being a sober coach and stuff like that. I, that that very, very intriguing to me. So mm. we're going to take a little break here, and uh, you guys come on back with us. Uh, we've got Anika here and David, and I'm not going to say the last names anymore because we're kind of crossing <laughs> some lines here. But, uh, but anyways, y'all come on back. And uh, thanks for listening to the Mosquito Steve Show. The Mosquito Steve Radio Show is back. Here's your host, Mosquito Steve. Thank you for coming back to the Mosquito Steve Show. And uh, thanks to Chicago for uh, sending me that lead in right there. I love a, it. Yeah, I know. The band's I love, love the me. Music. Too. I know. It's, Did it you great? pick that? I, I picked all these, yeah. I love yeah. it. So, um, all right, so I want to ask, I do want to come back. We're going to talk about this sober coaching, sober transport, all that kind of stuff. But um, Anika's here, and I want uh, to talk a little bit. Now, I tried to find, so I've been doing some research on you. Okay. So, in fact, uh, let me talk about the times you were in jail. Uh, No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) No, um, what I want to talk about is is I noticed there were some people that were congratulating you on the Huffington Post. You got a Huffington Post article. That is really cool. I couldn't find it, though. I couldn't find the article. It was on, it's on Facebook. Well, I couldn't find it on Facebook either. Okay, I'll have to shoot it to you. You need to make sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, So what was it about? It's about 
my story, basically, on how Simply Grace, the sober living homes that I have. I have three sober living homes now in the Texas area. Oh, I didn't area. know you had three. Yes, I do. Wow. I have. I started in Lake Highlands, uh, right by White Rock Lake. Hey, Lake Highlands. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's where I, my grandparents' house is. Really? Uh, I probably am that's friends where it with is. your grandparents. That's probably how Probably friends with my dad. <laughs> he went to Brian Adams. <laughs> um, high school, but I started there. Moved, then I had I opened a house in Tyler because there was a huge need. Mm-hmm. Now I'm opening in uh, Plano. We'll have Ooh. a house in Plano in a couple weeks. But um, they were basically I got with somebody, Lara Frazier, who um, she's a really good writer and she's a writer for the she does writing for the Huffington Post. And I didn't even think about the Huffington Post, but when I asked her if she would do the story of Simply Grace, I wanted to tell the story how. It is truly God's story of Simply Grace and how I had really, I just did what he told me to do. And mm-hmm. it, he used somebody who was so broken, even at the time that I did, that I was given the vision for Simply Grace. And so I, ha- I told her the story from the beginning and all the miracles that happened in the meantime over the last five years and how it came about and how a lot of sober livings, if you've, I know you've, I'm sure you've heard, a lot of sober livings, people get the idea they have a house, they have this extra house, or they have a house their parents gave them. They're like, oh, I'm going to put some, I'm going to make it into a sober living house. Um, and they, and it always closes because this is not a moneymaker. Right. And I kind of wanted to get the, the story out, like the truth out about how this happened. And it wasn't my idea. It really wasn't something I wanted to do. Um, and I really wanted people to see that this is something that is needed in so many different areas where people can, when they get out of treatment like I did, I didn't have a lot of money to put towards sober living and right. I didn't and my parents weren't going to do it even if they had money. They couldn't afford after, you know, paying for, and a lot of families cannot afford after paying for treatment after treatment, 11 treatment centers later. And so I want women to be able to come to Simply Grace on a um minimum wage job and still be able to afford it. Okay. And so the story was just about my life and how I was broken whenever Simply Grace came to me and I'm still broken. You know, but my it was really about breaking the stigma of addiction and mental health. And like, even if you have uh, addiction and mental health and you suffer every, you know, you suffer, you can still be successful and you can still be used by God. Yes. Right. Through the 12, you know, and that came from, my, and it talks about find how I found God in this sober living home 21 years ago. I stayed in Oxford. And through the third step, somebody told me, when you get in enough pain, Anika, you'll do something about it. And you're going to hit your knees and you're going to ask you're going to, whoever you, you know, whoever you, it is out there, you're going to ask for help. And I did. I was like, help me, God. Yeah. I didn't know who, I didn't know. But since that day, man, 20, I guess it was 20 years ago, he's had his hand on me until the point where I'm at now, where we're in three houses later and we'll be going national one day. Like there's that no doubt awesome. in my mind. That is awesome. Okay. So um, if somebody wants to come, if somebody needs the help. hmm Okay, do they have to come out of a treatment center to move into sober living, or do they just have to be sober a certain amount of time? Or what's, We what's at their least promise? want them to be sober seven days. Okay, um, okay. We do not want – I had somebody call yesterday. They've been sober for 24 hours, but they're still shaking. Yeah. And that's going to mess up because I have to look at the house as a whole and not as just one person. Right. Um, and so we're going to ask them, like Maggie's house is great. Get yep. them to go through detox. Shout out Maggie. to Maggie's house. Yes. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Maggie. Maggie's house. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Lisa. We love Maggie's. Yep. Um, so we want them to go there or a treatment center for sure. Like I work for uh, Awakenings Recovery uh-huh. in Fredericksburg. It's a treatment center. We want them to go somewhere and get some help first. Learn about the disease, the allergy, whatever. Right. Learn about yes. that first. And then we'll help them. Because if you look at our symbol, it, you said it. But our symbol is four pieces, which I didn't even know that that's how it was going to end up. But it's four puzzle pieces, and it's emotional, spiritual, uh, physical, and mental. And we want to, it says, putting the pieces back together, man, because these women don't know how to put the pieces back together. And so that's what we want to help them do. But if they're still clouded with uh, alcohol and drugs at the moment, we can't really help them. We need to get them we need to get them detoxed. Okay, so a woman comes out of Maggie's. They got 14 days mm-hmm. clean and sober. Mm-hmm. They don't have a dime to their name. How does that work? So we've had situations where we will get them. Like in Tyler, we have a church that gives them their um, their d- down you know their down payment. Okay. We don't call it a deposit anymore because what we do is we give them two weeks at the end free. Like we don't do it like that like we used to anymore. But what we're going to do is we're going to try to get them to reach out as much as they can and get as much money as they possibly can. 
and then we'll help them if we possibly can with the rest of it. Okay. I've had people, but we want them to put some skin in the game. Sorry, okay. I said skin. I didn't say cat, though, <laughs> Yeah, this time. you didn't say cat. Did but it. I do want them to have some money. I've had people come in for free, man, and they don't. They don't take it seriously. I've had it happen a million times. Yeah. But we want them to we want them to reach out and get help if they can. But if not, they need to get a job and they'll start paying us. Yeah, that's really a good lesson in life, I have to tell mm-hmm. you. So as Mosquito Steve, all the time, especially when I'm out speaking mm-hmm. and people find out who I am, then they always want, oh, do you have any samples? Yeah. So, I have to tell you, not once, not one time mm-hmm. has providing free samples ever come back to me back as to far you. as that's business true. goes no. now it makes me feel better and when i can i like to but it it rarely comes back to me well but i'm not helping the girls either no no so you okay know? so okay. i gotta ask so now nowadays the big trend is in fact i just saw this new there's a new uh video going around on facebook about the woman who is overdosing in a walmart yes and her little kid is there it's so sad yes. graphic and then there's another one where there's two parents who oh, have God. overdosed and passed out passed and their kids out in the, in the back seat. so um so showing this stuff is that deterring alcoholics and drug addicts is that is there any deterring, deterring them yeah. no from from using is that make no. them want to get recovered no what's because I mean, why I, is it everywhere I, I, I now think, i think people that aren't alcoholic or addicts I mean, look at that with misunderstanding. Yep. Um, the addict and the alcoholic, complete powerlessness. I mean, you know, we look at that and that's normal. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's like, oh, you know, okay. but. Yeah. Oh, I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's nothing. And that could be me, us today, man. Yeah, that's, the, that's right. That's the part we understand that step one, all three of us. Yeah, That's absolutely. step one. That could be us at, if we do not. Practice those principles and all well, our affairs. Y'all, I'm not sure about me. Come on, <laughs> mosquito <laughs> Steve. <clears throat> we might have to be checking him in after uh, this, guys. So, uh, okay, um, but there's a couple of things I want to mention so that because I tend to forget them and we tend to run out of time because there's so much to talk about. So, uh, yes. how do people get a hold of you? Okay, um, www.simplygracehouse.org is our website, and you can okay. call uh, us at two one four. Seven seven four nine eight zero eight, but all that information is on our website as well. Okay, simply Grace House dot org or dot com or dot com. Yes. I was going to say mm-hmm. I found you on dot com. David, how do people get a hold of you? Yes, you can go to www sober one two three dot net, mm-hmm. okay, or four six nine six zero two one two eight nine. Okay, so I know you're you're in tap, right? You're involved in tap, mm-hmm. and yes, David, I think you are too. So. Um, so we've got the this rally for recovery coming oh, yeah. up. So mm-hmm. do y'all know anything about that? I don't know anything about it. I just actually saw October second. They're uh-huh. having a big deal on the recovery new bridge. Walk. Yeah, it's yeah. the recovery walk. It's going to be amazing. There's going to be music, food, food trucks, a bunch of us out there. Okay. Um, do y'all I have like y'all gonna have like a table or booth or something? You can have a table. I do not um, because we're nonprofit. Sometimes we don't. Yeah, we have. It costs money to do that, so we'll just Are be out there. Are you gonna be selling talking. your wares out there, David? Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. be out there. Just uh, <laughs> he's gonna have a covered wagon. <laughs> <and> he's <laughs> gonna, <laughs> get no, it's gonna right be here. a lot of fun. So it you is. guys listening, you'll come on out because that's a big deal here in the city of Dallas. So it sounds like fun. I've never yeah. done one of these. I think so it, I know it I goes need to back to breaking the stigma, Steve. That's what I wanted to say yes. when yes. when you were talking about uh, seeing those people in the WalMarts or in the cars. Is that's the stigma that social media puts on us? When really, let's look at the allergy. Let's look at the disease yes. and how that's what we're not bad people, man. Right. We make bad decisions. And until we get that spiritual, that whatever it is, things are not going to, you know, things are not. But that doesn't make us bad people. That's we right. make no. bad decisions. We're just sick people. Sick yeah. people trying to get trying well. To get be- well, well yeah. I got to tell you, when I first heard about this, you know, this uh, um, bit of long-term recovery stuff and all that, it actually, I got really, yeah, you know, I, I was, too, yeah. man, I was real defiant. You know, How dare you do that? You know, this is a, you know, alcoholics yeah. anonymous to save millions of lives and all this. And then, but I was up at University of North Texas, and this is about three years ago, and I was watching these young people come into recovery. And I have to tell you, in college, if somebody had approached me about recovery, it wasn't going to happen. Yeah, This is actually, it's being effective. We're actually uh, bringing young people in and they're sticking with it and they're getting on fire with the program. And I, so, so I have to bow to it because I mean, it really is something's working. And so, uh, so I, I like what they're doing. Okay, David, got to know what is a sober coach 
Yes, let me let me just kind of tell you um, when when I got sober. Okay, I worked the twelve steps, and recovery was great. But as I went along, God was just speaking at, to me on my heart, was saying, "You know what? What about those guys that go to AA or they don't go to AA, and they're falling through the cracks?" And I mean, and you know, when we come in here, we are very sick. I mean, we're broken, like Anika said. Um, there's so much, uh, there's so many different levels. I mean, there's mental illness, there's, um, I mean, mentally, emotionally, uh, physically, man, we're, I mean, we've, we've had it all backwards. We're, we're sick, mm-hmm. you know, it takes a long time to get well. Mm-hmm. And sometimes as much as I love the rooms of AA, you know, early pre-stage treatment is great, but what about after that? And some guides need coaching and individual coaching to walk you through that. Okay. That is great. So I want to. I'm going to come back. We want to talk more about that. I'm not. I'm, I'm missing my breaks. I got to tell you, I don't ever miss breaks. I'm missing breaks today. What is that about, Will? I'm going to blame you. You're not missing them. <laughs> well, I'm getting awfully close, though. No, so, you're uh, actually hitting them right about right I'm on time. Here. I'm okay. throwing you. All That's the way what it off. is. You're throwing me <laughs> off. Annika. Annika. Okay. Good Annika conversation Skylark. always does that. What is it? Annika Skywalker. Skywalker. Yeah. Those. All right. We'll be right back. We're going to pause for a minute. But, uh, please come back. We got a lot more to talk about. This is Thanks awesome. for listening to the Mosquito Steve Show. The Mosquito Steve Radio Show is back. Here's your host, Mosquito Steve. Howdy, everybody. Mosquito Steve here. We got a lot more to cover in just a few minutes. So time just flies. There's just not enough time to talk about all the stuff. We need to talk about. So um, I'm again, again, I'm here with David and with Anika. And so uh, Anika's got Simply Grace. Um, why do we need more sober living? I mean, when I sobered up, it was, you know, you go into a treatment center for 28 days, you come out and, you know, you're well. Isn't that how it works? Well, so, <laughs> I, you know, it did not work like that for me. I went into uh, seven days of detox and then I went into sober living for a year and a half. And so that was kind of and I haven't used in 20 since I was 19 years old. So 21 years later. Research has shown, and thanks to Oxford House, um, because they did a lot of research behind 12 months of being in some sort of recovery environment, takes recidivism down from 80% to 10%. That's a huge change. If somebody can, Mm. even if they're in treatment, because 90-day treatment is amazing. That is like the standard. That's what everybody wants is that 90-day mark, like Awakenings does. And so... And so then if they can stay in nine more months into in sober living, then that's exact like your long term recovery is going to be a lot longer. The okay. recidivism is way better. I was wondering that's if there correct. were some, some There's a lot of studies. Yeah, that. that's that's I good. can get so, you that. Yeah. I mean, it used to be there was actually a program back when I sobered up that was uh, you just check in for 10 days and then a couple of two day follow ups. And so, <laughs> is that methadone? Uh, oh, no, yeah. I don't. I think it was shock treatment or yeah. something. Oh, yeah, yeah, shock, yeah. Uh, shick, shick, yeah. Yeah. something like that. So. I went and saw that out in Denton. They oh, still wow. that's did the that kind of treatment natal. I liked. Uh, you know, when yeah. I was unrecovered. Well, yeah. you know, it's amazing though, really. But if you look at it, you know, when when Alcoholics Anonymous started in 1935, I mean, the standard was yeah. shock treatment. I yeah. mean, it was, mm. you know, in, in, in heavy doses of drugs and sedatives and locking you up. And that's, they didn't know what to do with us. That's how amazing this is. That's why I don't think people really have the appreciation for how important it was that Bill Wilson oh my met God. Dr. Bob Smith and, you know, Henrietta Cyberling and all these, all those little, little things that happened yes. that got those two together and changed. They literally changed the world. Reading the the big book, I mean, and I love AA literature. My sponsor has me do the third step, the seventh step. I mean, those prayers, when you read it, it's like poet. It's like literally from God to me. Yeah. Like that, that big book, the way that it's written out, I mean, it is literally from him. Yes. So, um, and I'm actually, I've just become more interested in the traditions and oh, yeah. the history in the last, um, I guess, five or six years. And uh, because it is, to me... I see God in the traditions. You know, the, oh, yeah. the steps, honestly, the steps are borrowed. I mean, we've those have come from other places. Now, we've adapted them, and I think we've improved them, and obviously we have because they've just gone bockers and everybody's using them. But the truth is, is that 
The traditions are ours. Those are original to Alcoholics Anonymous, and those are original to Bill Wilson. He created those with some of the, some help from from other people in the program. But he fought to get the traditions in, and yet we probably wouldn't be here today if it wasn't right. for the traditions. My sponsor used, has me doing them right now. Really? Oh, well, mm-hmm. he used to go out. So Bill used to go. They'd ask him to come speak, and they'd say, well, whatever you do, don't talk about those damn traditions. <laughs> so, Oh, can I say damn on the air? Yeah, you're good. Okay, yeah. okay. You didn't have to dump well, that. Okay, did. good. Yeah. By the way, don't say any dirty it's words. Save day. Yes, traditions. yes. So, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. okay. So I know we're going to run out of time. So one more time, I want you guys okay. to tell how to get a hold of you because uh, because we're going to probably end up going <laughs> at the very end. So, okay. So, Anika, how do people get a hold of you? You can get a hold of me at Anika at simplygracehouse.com or 214 214- Seven seven four nine eight zero eight. Okay, one more time for the email because I want people to know if you have a kid or a relative or a friend or somebody that needs help, you Anybody. guys do not hesitate to reach out. Now, sometimes mm-hmm. um, there's you know we're limited in what we can do if it's not you that needs the help, but uh, but still, it's a good idea to reach out and get some answers from people. So, one more, how do they get a hold of you? One more time. One more time. It's Anika at Simply. S I M P L Y Grace House dot com. Okay, and I'm gonna wait to ask David till we're like got twelve seconds. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm just okay. All right, David, how do people get a hold of you? Okay. Uh, you can go to D A V six seven E N G at Gmail dot com. Wait, 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 wait. wait. What go is that? back. What is, that is very confusing. That's difficult. Dav Say it slower. D A V six seven E N G at Gmail dot com. What does that mean? Okay. It's just David. Okay. It's not really. Six, seven. Oh, what is England. Six, seven? Yeah, England. E-N-G. Remember that. Yes. David England, D-A-V, six, seven, E-N-G. At gmail.com. Perfect. What's the 67? My birth date. Really? <laughs> yes. Oh, You're my born God. in 67? Yes. Ah, you guys I'm an old Switch man. those numbers around, and that's when I was born. All right. Oh my God! <laughs> so let me tell yeah. you my number four six nine six zero two one two eight nine. Okay, and I do have another email: d e sobercoach at icloud dot com. Okay, thank you. So you guys, that's how you get a hold of them. If you want to get a hold of me, it's Steve at mosquito Steve dot com. Uh, Steve at MosquitoSteve.com. Check out my website, MosquitoSteve.com. Enough about that. Let's talk about um, helping people. So, um, all right. So we've got Simply Grace for Sober Living. I know there's – why is there so much treatment marketing and stuff concentrated in North Texas? It seems like if you've got a treatment center anywhere Mm -hmm. in the world, you've got a rep here. What is that about? Addiction's gone up. Well, and I, I mean, will tell you, 12-step, like we talked about earlier, AA, Big Book, is really, really big in Texas. And so it's just a migrating place. I don't know why, but addiction yeah. is – it's noticed here in Texas. We talk about it. So have y'all been to any of the other any other states to see? Because I think TAP is real strong here. Yes. Um, and, you know, which Texas Association of Addiction, addiction Professionals, Professionals. – uh, and APRA, um, Lois's deal she started, which is Association of Professional Radio Re- Announcers. And, and no, I don't know. Services, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, okay. so yeah. That's, Association, yeah. Yeah, so it's there's a lot there's a lot of strength in the associations here. Yes. And so, um, so maybe that's it. I don't know. But it just seems like I keep seeing these of out of state and out of city treatment centers are mm-hmm. putting a rep here. Well, North oh, Texas yeah. is just on the boom. Anyway, it's not because we're just that messed up, is it? Well, we're that really too. That I mean, up? definitely you know, that. Opiate addiction has increased majorly. I mean, prescription addiction. Um, so I think everything we've discussed is mm-hmm. relative. So okay, you sobered up when you were nineteen, Anika. I did. That is amazing to me. So I did. Um, I knew I had a problem when I was sixteen, but I wasn't going to get help. Um, I just wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Right. What made you ready at 19 years old? So this is probably the best part of my story, I think, is my parents. They pretty much threw me. They tricked me into I had a break in my using. I was down to 83 pounds. And on my birthday, they tricked me into going to eat and told me we were going shopping. I ended up at Timberlawn. And uh, I tried to run. 
I was not ready. And I looked at my mom when they checked me in because they actually said I had a problem and I needed help. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Anyways, I told her I hated her. And she said, I would rather you hate me than to watch you die. And so I don't believe when people say don't you're not going to be able to help them until they want help. That is not that is a lie. Because I wouldn't be sitting here today, 21 years later, had my mom not took the stance, no matter what. Yeah, it didn't. I didn't need to say I'm ready in order to be ready. Yes, that's the case in some people's, but don't take that chance. It's not worth it. Yeah. So even if it, if they've been through a treatment program, you know, just don't ever give up. I, cause no. I would tell you that that's part of it. I know sometimes it's really really hard for the families, and and uh, that you've just you got to keep doing what you can. Have. Some at some point. And I think what happened in my case is my family finally was done. They'd done everything they could do. And, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, we're going to pray for you. And I think that was a big part of it. My mom, I don't think, ever stopped praying for me. And so that was a huge part of it. But they finally said, you know what, you're on your own. And uh, and I'm just, I'm not, I'm a germaphobe. So homelessness is not really my thing. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, That's, so I finally did something. I think so many, and now I look back at, I used to be ashamed of my story because I got it so early and I didn't have to go to all the yets. And then I realized that was my story. That's the God, the story that God gave me so that I could help somebody that was going through exactly my struggle, just like yours is somebody needed to hear your specific story. And had you not gone through it the way you did, you wouldn't have gotten help. Same thing with David. Um, I, I'm not ashamed of my story anymore. That's why I tell it to everybody. And I still struggle every day. And Good. I talk about it, struggling. Good. So tell me about, so because I know you go back, you give you go to jails mm-hmm. and uh, go talk to women there. Mm-hmm. So I think it's awesome. That's an awesome program. I have a lot of respect for people that do that. I wish I could do that. We've only got a couple of minutes left. So, uh, but just, have, did you have experience? Have you been to jail? Did you go through the prison system? I did not go through the prison system, but it seemed like every weekend in high school, I ended up, the cops would drive through the neighborhood that I loved to frequent that I did not belong in, mm-hmm. and I would be drunk every time, so I ended up in jail every Really, pretty much every weekend. Yeah, yeah, I did that. I didn't go. To, I didn't go to prison. Didn't go to the pen. Didn't do hard time. And that but, was only yeah. by David, the grace. What about you? I hard never time? went to, to prison. I did go to jail a couple times on. Short you know, there's stints. a marshal right there waiting for you. Yeah, as soon as the show's um, over, you know my my yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm clean. My record's clean. So thank God for that. Good for you. Uh, by the grace of God, I should yes. have been in prison or dead. Yes. But he uh, he wanted to do something with me. So yeah, he wanted you to talk to people um, today. But yeah, I do. I just do want to say um, the sober coaching, uh, sober companion uh, transport intervention deal used to be big on the West Coast and East Coast. And we work, uh, you know, I, I just say that if you're a sober coach out there, or you're in this this realm of recovery. We work with licensed professionals. OK, because I'm actually going to school to get my LCSW also mm. uh, licensed clinical social worker. And. Um, but it is all about um, helping the addict and <clears throat> alcoholic get through those pitfalls and individual coaching through through the you know recovery process. I want to wish you luck <clears throat> on that because I got to tell you, you when I sobered up I I could not couldn't I couldn't do class I couldn't do it it just I wasn't couldn't mm-hmm. focus enough so okay you guys we're out of time I told you this would happen we we're thank just, you we just so much thank you Steve Anika, so, thank you you're awesome you guys thank listen you, again next week um, I think we're gonna probably focus on mosquitoes next week but I appreciate y'all tuning in this week and stay tuned we got lots of great things happening uh, go to my Facebook page and like me and vote for me I'm actually vote uh, for in you, a contest yes. vote for me I can already voted for you, Steve. vote yeah, for Steve we love you right, you guys y'all come back